Howdy folks. Uh, today we're going to go over part three of authentication, which is going to be hooking up our existing authentication system into handlebars. So what I've done here is I've added in handlebars. I've added in um, the view engine. I've split our APIs. So this is kind of an important part um, that I'll get into in a little bit. Uh, I've added some views, some templates, and I've moved our auth into a middleware. So let's take a look at that real quick. All this does is it just looks at the cookies and verifies our token just like normal. It takes the user ID and puts it on the request object. So that we have access to it later and then calls next like any good middleware would do. Inside here, I've just told this to use that auth. I haven't touched this one because it's a header and it's a little different. So um, let's talk about API routes versus path routes. So API routes are routes that follow a RESTful convention. They're called often with a JSON body or as a get um, with path variables. They are expected to return a JSON body and a status. Um, or in this case, you know, an error. Why do we do this? And why do we split it out this way? Well, because it might not be just a web client that's hooking up into your APIs. Let's say your company is building an Android client as well. If they're building an Android client as well, then the Android client doesn't actually want to get HTML as its response. So for this uh, login, for instance, I don't want to actually be rendering my home template as, as part of this here because login might be getting used by their clients. It also kind of blurs the line um, and we like to keep our separation of concerns very strong. So APIs are separate. You call them from fetch um, on your client and they return to the client and then the client decides what to do with them. On the other hand, we have our path routes here. These routes are something the user is actually going to, these are not APIs the user is actually going to navigate to these in their browser. And these do need to render templates uh, because the user wants to see HTML as a result. So these actually need to be kept separate as well because the user isn't going to navigate directly to one of these APIs. This is going to get called by the client, but the user will navigate here. So yeah, that it's, it's just a very good practice to keep these things separate. Um, there are some cases if you're building a true multi-page system you generally don't have a lot of apis every button click um, every form submission will actually take you to one of these and then that will process and appropriately redirect but we're not building one of those right now so let's take a look at what we've got um if uh if you see i'm getting the home template here um and that's perfectly fine because we're going to slash and that's what slash renders. It renders the home template. But I would like, if the user is not logged in, I would like to actually go to the login page instead. So we can do something very similar to our auth middleware here, but we don't want to use this middleware because if this middleware, if there's an error, it actually prints out bad login and puts a bad status. So let me show you what that would look like if I was to put that in here. Oops. Middleware off. So if I put this in the middle here and then I reload this page, you can see I get bad login and I get an error here. That's not the login page. That's not what I want to do. So I can't use this middleware because this middleware is specifically for APIs. I can use a lot of it though. So I'm going to make a new middleware called Path Off. It's not the best name, but it'll do. The rest of this doesn't change. The success case stays the same. In case of there being an error though, I don't want to print the error text. Instead, I want to redirect to login. All right, rest redirect is basically going to tell the browser, hey, you should go to this page instead. And the browser will usually do that automatically on your behalf. So now if I change this to path off, this and let's try going here and again now you can see what happens is it says 302 and if I look at the response headers um, it says hey here's the new location you should go to which then my browser immediately goes to right after and now I have the username and password so let's uh, 
log in. Nothing happens. Well, it's because we haven't set it up yet. So if I go down to login, I do have a login form set up already with this um, data already being pulled out of it. So what we're going to do here is our login API is a fetch API. So let's call um, let's call it API user login. Okay, method post because that's to match. We need a header. Our header is going to be our content type because we're going to send JSON to it because our server only knows how to handle JSON. JSON. And then our body, despite us telling it JSON here, the body actually has to be a string. So we're just going to wrap an object in JSON stringify. All right. So result. And then I'm just going to console log the result. So before we go forward on this, let's just take a look at what the user, the login API is supposed to do. It validates the password with bcrypt, validates the username, and it sets a cookie. So let's check that out. Um, let's say that we reload this. Let's look at our network tab. Okay. We log in. This gives me a 200. And you can see set cookie. It's right there. Now, here's an interesting thing. If I go over to application here and I look in my cookies, there it is. There's my cookie. And so you can see the browser's already set this. And now because it's set on this particular domain, every request I make from the browser to this domain, to this localhost 3001 is going to include this cookie. That includes our home. So if I go here now, you can see if I actually look in the network here, localhost to go to home, the request header contained this cookie. The browser does that magically for us, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to delete this, do it again, doesn't send the cookie, which means I have to log in again. Now what I want to do is as soon as the login works, I don't want the user to have to refresh the page themselves. I want to do it automatically. So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to say um, if result.ok. Why do we do if result.ok? Because if the result is bad, we return a four, uh, 403. So if the result is okay, it means we return to 200, which means the cookie was successfully set, which means the next time we go to the home page, it'll be successful. So we're going to say window.location equals slash. Window.location, we worked with this a little bit in some older, um, some uh, earlier classes. What this does is this basically just changes this part of the login here of the URL and brings us back to slash. So here, log in, and there we go. Google warns me to change my password because I have a weak password. Probably a good idea to do that most of the time. So now we've got a system that appropriately calls our login API, which sets the cookie. It knows to go to the home page automatically. The home page will only load if there is um, author authorization set, authentication set, which we see happening. So now let's make use of that. Let's actually say, okay, now we're here. We want to actually fetch our user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in the user model. And we're going to say um, user equals await user.find by pk request.userid. Where does this come from? We set it in our middleware, which is here. This request is the same request oops, that shows up here. So if we set the user ID on it, it's going to be the same user ID that it just passes through. And that's how middleware works. Um, you probably want to have something set up to deal with if there's no um, no user, because that's a situation that can happen sometimes, but I'm not going to worry about that too much here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, to render something into handlebars, we pass an object as a second parameter. I'm just going to pass user. And now in my home, I'm going to say, okay, you are user.username because the username is something that is on that, um, that model. If I go here, I have the username. So let's, oops, let's reload that now. You are 
blank. Well, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? Why did that show up? Um, it it's where's our username? Did we put the wrong object in? Well, no. The issue is that um, user data here, or not user data here. Sorry, uh, user here is actually a an instance. It's not a simple object. It's an instance of the user. And I'll show you what that means. Oh, and you can see access has been denied to property username because it's not an own property of its parent. Don't worry about what that is right now. Just it's it's a function of JavaScript classes. So if I print out the user here and I run this again, you can see this is a really complicated object that's in here. And so handlebars doesn't know how to deal with it. What we need is the plain object. And handlebar or um, SQLize has a way for us to get that. Plain equals get plain true. So let's log that object. Load this. Still doesn't work because we haven't changed anything there. But now you can see much simpler object. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass that in here. And now it works. Um, so this is basically how you would integrate handlebars with our authentication inside. So first you have your authentic, your uh, middleware that redirects to your login. Do not use this for an API, but use it for um, your routes, your page routes. And so it's just verifying the token, but redirects to login. You've got your login set up so that when you click login, it actually calls the API, <clears throat> which sets the cookie. And then that makes the browser just magically work with everything. And then it goes back to home, which will then work. Home at that point now has the user ID because of the middleware. It gets that user object and uses that to render the template, which can now be personalized with data for that user. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you all in class.